Alright, how's it going everyone? We're back with the 10th episode in the series of As They Say in Kalos. Today we're going to look at the Pokemon Ash Court in the Univer region in the anime, so Gem 5 Pokemon, and let's kick this off. First of all we've got Piduff, the native basic bird line that there is in the Unova region, so taken from Pigeon at the start, and Dove. I seem to remember there being a little bit of controversy at the time when this Pokemon was first announced, in particular its name, being a bit lazy in terms of being similar to Pidgey. I suppose we have multiple species of Pidgey in the real world, so why not in the Pokemon world? In French though, we have Poichijon, ending taken from Pigeon, so Pigeon again. To start, it's taken from Poichich, which translated to English as chickpea, so like a seed-like foodstuff. Pigeons eat seeds. Nothing more to it than that, I guess. Right, moving on, and our first pun of the day is Tranquil. So it's taken from Tranquil, Tranquility for calmness, and Quill. So the part of the feather that was used in more medieval times as a prelude to a pen. And French also has something of a pun in Colombo, which to French speakers, maybe this doesn't translate too well, because Colombo is a famous detective in literary works. But what word is this Pokemon's name actually taken from? Well, we've got Colom at the start, Dove, so keeping on the theme we had with this pre-evolution in English. At the end, we have Bull, the origin of the word beautiful. So beautiful Dove, I don't really see Tranquil as that pretty. Design isn't anything that special. No, I'm not really sure about that. Keeping up the puns in Unpheasant, where we've got Unpleasant, Pheasant, did we really need to change the F and the Z here? Well, it makes it look more like a Pokemon name if we have that. But if you're going to put Fez in a Pokemon name, at least give it a Fez. What we have in French, De Plaison, is actually the same thing. We have De Plaison and Faison, the literal translation of Unpleasant Pheasant in French. But I'm not really sure what the unpleasant part refers to. Maybe the sort of pink things hanging down on the male form. But aren't they supposed to be attractive rather than unpleasant? I don't know with this. Next to Ash's Pokemon and Rock and Roller. And this is a great pun. Rock and Roll, love it. We keep the basis of the overall phrase, but then change it up a bit to make it more like a Pokemon name. Really like it, so we've got the rolling part referring to its round shape. It's a rock type too, so it makes sense. Maybe it's also taken from Rugged, that could come in there somehow. Fortunately, we don't have a pun in French. We have No Julith. And we've seen before, Leith from Lithos. Rock in Greek. In the start, nodule. So, nodules are like small bumps. So, a bumpy rock. Yeah, I suppose it is, isn't it? So, today just seems to be puns, puns, puns. Baldor, again, another pun. I always thought this was just a misspelling of boulder, but you can see at the end, or oh, it's a raw rock material that contains metals such as iron. We're keeping the lith part in the end though, in the French translation in Geolith. So Geo or Geo in English translates to Earth in Greek, meaning this Pokemon is quite literally an Earth rock. It's a bit basic, but I suppose Boulder or wasn't any different really, was it? We just liked it a bit more because we had the pun. Final evolution in this line is Pokemon that Ash didn't actually evolve. Never had this Pokemon in Gigalith, so French and English both have a similar spelling of this, just with an extra E on the end in French. And it's taken from Leith, as we've had previously, so the rock. And now we have another Greek word in Gigas, translating to giant, so giant rock, keeping a theme. So I'm not sure whether some of the names are maybe created first, so it was French wine created before the English here. So it seems a bit coincidence we have both of these memes similar the thing when we got the list all the way through. But I suppose we could look at it the other way, where we had the English names first, and French just decided to keep the list part at the end throughout the whole evolution line. Final evolution line I'm going to look at today in Sir Waddle. So I always thought that the Waddle part at the end was from the way it moves, so Waddle the Bow. It has sort of ball like feet, doesn't it? So I thought it could be to do with that, but maybe it is to do with Swaddle. A word that means to wrap something up so if you look at the other Pokemon in this evolution line you'll see this further so you swaddle someone up like a blanket like a small child and the start is obviously taken from sew a form of stitching to repair or fasten things together but French seems to take this more of a book route in Laviette 
to start taking from Lava, a word we've discussed quite a few times when talking about book types in the past. And the end from Layet. This is a word used across languages to form the clothing for a newborn child that wraps it up and keeps it nice and cosy. I suppose you could look at Swaddle as a child here, baby of the evolution line. Looking at Swaddle, we again have the Swaddle for wrapping something up and even further wrapping in Cocoon. We've got a lot of Pokemon now that are based on Cocoons and Pupas so I quite like how this is quite sort of discreet at the end, the double O-N, the oon sound. It doesn't make you see it straight away. And French is keeping its theme of clothing again in Couverdure, which is a combination of two very similar sounding words. We've got Couverdure, the blanket, and Verdure which is greenery, so I quite like how they combine two rather similar words into this overall Pokemon name. So when we look at Swaddloon, it does quite a lot like someone wrapped up in a green blanket. So finally we have Livani. What we've got to start is obviously taken from the leaves, see them covering its whole body so can't be anything else there, and the end? I'd never really noticed this until I looked into it, I just went with it I think, but we have Nanny, so we're referring to this Pokemon as like a carer looking after Maybe it's pre-evolutions or even other Pokemon. And we keep with this theme in the French of maternal, with the end taken from maternal, so to have a mothering nature. The start of the name, Manta, it feels the design of the Pokemon as well, because it's based on a mantis. And it seems quite odd that a mantis would be mothering, because they're often described as prey mantises, where they quite attacking. Right, I think we'll leave it there with the episode. We've covered half the Pokemon that Ash covered in the Unova region, if we discount the starter Pokemon that he caught. Just some amounts to the usual episodes, and we'll definitely have a part two of this sometime later down the line. But as I always ask you, leave your suggestions in the comments. Tell me what you want me to do next, what should I look at next, part twos of anything, something similar, something completely new even. Just leave the suggestions, I'll get back to you. I always reply to my comments. And I've also set up a new Twitter, you can see the link in the description there, if you want to go follow me on there, give me some suggestions, let me know what you think of the series, feedback, whatever you want to do with that. But thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers!